Hey guys, it's Always Improving here and today I'm back with an acrylic painting and this is going to be a 4th of July themed painting. Uh, it is for my mom actually. We're going to hang it in my house. She likes to have these seasonal paintings that she can hang up and uh, I guess she likes it when I make them for her, so I'm going to make another one. Um, I've done some of these in the past. I don't know if I've shared them on the channel, but I will link them in the card if I have. Um, but for this one, what she wanted was a, an assortment of flowers. Um, and the sizing on these seasonal paintings has to be a 12 by 24 canvas. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes to kind of come up for a composition that fits that ratio. So the first thing I did did that was in the very beginning which is sketch out a couple ideas um, kind of understand what I wanted and how I would lay out all the elements and I decided on a kind of I don't know what they're called uh, I think galvanized bucket uh, a galvanized uh, metal bucket um, where it's kind of like shiny but it also has like matte parts I don't know it's an interesting texture but that's where I took the um, inspiration from for the bucket that I'm painting right now and I really actually like painting metal um, I think it's because it's one value and so it kind of it makes it easier uh, to focus on getting all the value shifts you want and you don't have to worry about the hues of the color and um, yeah it's just really easy and it's nice and relaxing and it's fun to get that gradient so that was really fun although because I did the background in white and gray I was kind of worried about how it would turn out I didn't know if it would be um, too much of one color too monochromatic um, but I think that why when I add like other colors it gets a little bit better and a little bit more interesting so the basic process for the bucket um, was basically I kind of decided where I wanted the highlight to come from and then where the highlights were I figured out where the shadows would be so I decided that the right side would be more in shadow and that the left would have an area of like almost pure white uh, but not quite so it was like a, a strip white uh, or really like gray color and then after doing that i wanted to start on the flowers uh, i did research a couple of different flowers but i'm not going to say that the flowers that i made in this are any one specific like breed of flower or anything um because i just kind of looked up like tall blue flowers and picked out a couple that i like to like i don't um i don't think that a lot of people um, know like a bunch of different species of flowers and so I don't think it's a big deal to compromise on that point and uh, create a composition of things that look like flowers um, and people can recognize those as flowers and it doesn't need to be a specific species of flower. But anyways, um, I of course started with the background so I started with those blue tall flowers um, and I just wanted a base layer of paint so that I would be able to change it in the future. I just wanted to make sure that my composition was set and that I knew where certain flowers were going. Um, I also tried to, a little bit in the base layer uh, for those blue flowers, I wanted some to be more blue and some to be more purple uh, because they were overlapping. So if if they were varied in their color, I would be able to see the difference between the two and um, really just make sure that the viewer could see the difference between them as well and that they wouldn't just blend into one big blue background. After doing the blue flowers, I did move on into the roses and to the red flowers. Um, I guess the roses are the only ones that I really have for sure that they are a certain type of flower. Um, but I just, again, wanted to get those base areas and just to get a nice layer down for the paint in general where it went. I also added in the back, like, um, like leaves and grass to give it a little more depth and to make sure that you could understand where the flowers are coming from. They're growing in the bucket. They're not just like sitting in the bucket. Um, so that was important. I do think that um, in the beginning of this, my flowers, my rose ones, they are a little bit too brown and too like yellow. I think I should have started out with more of just a white color and not had so much like brown color in them. That made it difficult to really uh, understand the colors that I wanted in those flowers because they're white roses and it was really difficult for me to actually get that exact color and like the exact shape of the flower uh, conveyed in 
the exact color. It's, it's kind of confusing, uh, but I did spend a lot of time reworking those areas and reworking the white roses specifically because of that uh, choice in the beginning to make them more brown than more white and desaturated. Throughout the middle portion of this painting, I was really just trying to figure out what I wanted and figure out how to convey the details of the flowers because at this point I definitely had already laid down all of like the base areas of paint. Like I knew where I wanted everything and I knew um, where the flowers would be. I just didn't know how to convey that detail of the flower and convey uh, all the shadows because roses specifically, which again I spent forever trying to work out all these details, they have a lot of detail. They have a lot of areas where there is darker shadows contrasted right next to each other with very bright white areas and so that was really hard for me to do and it ended up reworking these flowers a ton. Uh, I will say the roses took the longest amount of time um, but I also added details to the other flowers as well such as in the background those blue flowers I added a lighter center um, in order to just give it a little more variation and a little more um, interest because I felt like they were a little too bland and just kind of like random blobs they didn't really look like flowers and I think just having that white center in them really helped uh, for each of those little flowers on the bigger uh, plant. For the red flowers, I actually have two different types of red flowers. One of them was more of a scarlet, orangish red color, um, and those are the big ones. Uh, and then I have smaller ones that are more of a more of a magenta-y color. They're like a, a, a coolish red. And um, those ones were smaller with like dark brown centers. Um, and I think that that also just helped to add interest and some variation uh, because I felt like I needed more uh, more flowers that were smaller, but I didn't um, I didn't want to make the like only red flower be small because then I felt like it would fade into the background and I wanted an equal amount kind of of red, blue, and white. So I think that by having smaller red flowers I was able to add a bit more detail without compromising the amount of red in the piece. And after getting most of the details established, I moved on into just really small tweaks that I needed to get done before calling this piece finished. Um, this included just fixing a couple of mistakes that I had made. Uh, I did end up going back over a lot of the area on the bucket, um, just kind of fixing some of those value shifts. I reworked the roses again. I made the petals kind of more generalized and with a little bit less detail, but with harsher contrast because I felt like whenever I looked at my reference photos of white roses, there were really bright areas and then there were really dark areas and there wasn't a lot of mid-tones. So I felt like mine had too many, too much of like a mid-tone area. Uh, so I worked to reduce that in the detail stage here. I also added um, a bit more of a shadow on the ground for the, for the background. Um, but overall, this process was pretty interesting. I actually used a new, um, my new paints. I got Liquitex Basics, so they're still pretty cheap, but they're different. They're uh, more matte than the other acrylics I've been working with. I've been working with Master Touch, and I really enjoyed like the mixing qualities of these Liquitex. Um, so I recommend them for you if you're just starting out with acrylics. Uh, but overall, again, I had a lot of fun with this piece, and I think my mom will really enjoy this acrylic painting. And I also hope you enjoyed seeing the process behind this acrylic painting. And if you could, I would love your support on my Instagram page. I have the same username, Always Improving Art, on Instagram as well, where I post post daily. Um, I post finished products and sketches it, sketches like every single day. Um, of course I miss a few but in general it's, it's an, a daily occurrence so I would really love your support there if you uh, like my YouTube videos and anyways I'll see you next time. Bye!